It's that time every six to 12 months where every person on YouTube talks about the new greatest thing ever in the entire world, and we all get freaking hype. It's time to get freaking hype about the brand new Z270 motherboard. This is the 270X Gaming 5. There's also the 7 out there. There's a few little iterations on these things. Mainly it's the bells and whistles that are different. Uh, like you get like a dedicated Thunderbolt header. This one has a Thunderbolt uh, header, but not a dedicated port on the back. So you can still add an expansion card. But anyway, that's something for later in the video that I've said in the beginning of the video. Let's talk about what we have here. So it's the next generation. And some of you guys are gonna wanna know, should you upgrade from your older stuff to the new stuff? We'll talk about that. You're gonna wanna know how well does it overclock? We'll talk about that. You're gonna wanna see some benchmarks. We'll show you some of those. You're gonna wanna see the UEFI. We're gonna freaking show you that. But first off, let's take a motherboard tour right now. All right, let's take a quick motherboard tour. There's the uh, 7700K there in the center. Uh, Dura Black caps, and then we have some fancy MOSFETs and chokes and everything behind there. Uh, nice power phase design with the uh, new ID on top, this white Oros ID on top of the uh, heat sinks and everything. Up here's the 8-pin power connector, CPU power connector, and then also the optional CPU power fan, or you can use it for your radiator or whatever. Here's our uh, memory slots right here. It'll take up to 4,000 megahertz memory. Let me just take these things out so you guys can see. Got the G-Skill Trident in there right now. LEDs here, RGB all around. Overclocking buttons right up here, and then also like a, a button for like, I guess lower power mode or just sort of a down clocking economy, whatever. Uh, this LED area right here lights up. We've got uh, Turbo and XMP, those light up to let you know what's going on, um, if Turbo and XMP are, are active. When we press this button, hit uh, 4.7 gigahertz without any problems. Moving on down here, we've got another fan header, two USB 2.0, and these have uh, variable voltage control, which I'll tell you about when I get to the back panel. So this motherboard had lots of options as far as um, storage goes, but this is a uh, SATA Express. Now SATA Express can either be used as SATA Express, or you can just plug up each individual SATA port um, and so you'll have six in total there. We also have U.2 right here, and that's uh, PCI Express Gen 3x4. So some pretty extreme speed right there. Got another nice heatsink down here on the bottom with the Oros logo on it. And then below that we have, um, that is actually a Thunderbolt header. So you're gonna plug in right there, you can. And all your front panel stuff goes on right there. Moving on over, we have a, another fan header. Uh, that's the error code readout, USB 2, trusted flat platform module. Then we've got some RGB stuff hanging out over here. Now these RGB headers can be used to power like an external, you know, strip that you plug in like an RGB strip. Um, so that'll all be controlled by the motherboard so you can sync it all up. And then we have the audio stuff. So let's take a, another look at the audio. They've got the uh, amp up audio. They're pretty serious about audio on this one. It features the uh, Sound Blaster X5 MB5 plus the ALC. 1220 codec, 120 decibel signal to noise ratio. And we also have a smart headphone amplifier. So uh, that's nice to have the headphone amp built in. We have a gain switch. So if you guys are using some really high ohm or high impedance headphones, don't worry about it. Then we have a uh, removable op amp right here. This is Texas, Texas Instruments op amp and some dedicated audio capacitors. So pretty interesting audio setup right here on this board. Uh, they've really done a lot to make sure that you have a good audio experience. Now you can see here we have three uh, PCI Express, the uh, 16X slots right here. And then we have the, the 1X slots, so you can run three-way um, SLI or Crossfire. And also, the 1X being just up here is a nice spot because you can fit a 1X card in there. And then uh, there's a double slot right here because you're going to be using a double slot GPU with this. That's just They just know you're going to do that. So, um, pretty nice layout over here. And then we have, you see M.2? Yep, we've got one right there and one right here. Now, you can go in and mess with your NVMe uh, and you can actually run RAID 0 on this using the U.2, the M.2, whatever. So you guys have some pretty powerful options here uh, when it comes to extreme storage. Over here, you've got a, um, another system fan header. And I wanna focus right here for just a second. Two uh, UEFI, or I guess BIOS chips. Now these are both soldered to the board. They're uh, not removable. I was hoping that, hey, we've got a removable op amp. Maybe these will be removable. They're not, but you have two of them. So I guess that's the uh, way they're doing it. Uh, looking at the back panel here, we have all of our uh, audio options here, which is, you know, decently fancy. We've got all the gold. And that, that's good for uh, multiple insertions and all that sort of thing, just better conductivity, whatever. But sometimes I think uh, it's nice to have the actual colors so you can tell what you're plugging in. So that could be slightly frustrating for some. Also have the uh, SP diff on the back there. Um, moving on over, we have dual gigabit ethernet one is the uh, killer e2500 and the other one uh, uses the same killer software and all that stuff for packet management but it's the uh, actually an intel and the system shows up as intel i believe that one's intel and this one's a killer one and then below that uh, we have usb and uh, moving on over we have some more usb and then that's 3.1 uh, type c so that's extreme speed right there then we have uh, display port 
and we also have HDMI on board. And then moving on over, we have those yellow USB ports. Those are interesting. And then a uh, PS2 combo for mouse and keyboard. Now let's talk about those yellow ports for just a second. These uh, adjustable voltage USB ports, they call them USB DAC up, but they're mainly made for uh, you know high quality components that require clean, constant uh, voltage like a USB DAC or something like that. So that'll just ensure that those work flawlessly without any hiccups or weirdness or whatever. And so the beautiful thing about this board is that uh, in total, you have one USB 3.1 Gen 2, uh, it's Type-C. You have one USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-A. Then you have eight USB 3.1 Gen 1 and uh, six USB 2.0 ports in total. That includes the uh, the headers on board here. So lots of USB options here. So that was uh, the lay of the land. I forgot to mention the Thunderbolt header on the bottom down there by the uh, front panel connectors, but it's there. So uh, yeah, it's pretty nice. Now let's talk about the overclocking and the UEFI just a little bit. All right, uh, I think we're going to try to set this thing on fire now. It's 7700K in there. Let's take a look at the uh, the UEFI and just see what's under the hood, and then we'll set it on fire. Let's go through the UEFI here. First off, we got your advanced frequency settings. It's what you guys want to see the most, I think. You can do base clock overclocking if you want to. Playing with the strap on, y'all. Jesus, graphics uh, slice ratio and the uh, unslice ratio. CPU upgrade. All right, so this is just like automatic overclocking. Go and pick your CPU, like 6700K, you know, 4.5 or 4.6, whatever. 7600, whatever. i7. The i7 has three presets, 4, 6, 4, 8, and 5. So they're starting their presets at 4, 6. But we're going to try to set it on fire. So I'm going straight for the, uh, the 5 gigahertz preset. And then I'll come back in later and see if I can improve the voltages. Um, see how that works. Uh, clock ratio, keeping it at 42, well no, that's going to uh, override this, the upgrade is going to override that ratio, but you know, you can come in and change your ratio if you want. Advanced CPU core settings, there's another menu here, all this stuff, alright, so you can do by core um, on the multiplier, you have power limits on just about everything here, there's your RAM down here, just going through this quickly right now, this is not an overclocking tutorial, so you can disable cores if you're going for an extremely high clock on just one core, you can do that. Speed shift, keeping that off, yay. All your C states, C3, 6, 7, and 8 support. All right, uh, thermal monitor, yes, yes, yes. So all kinds of stuff going on here. Now let's put on the XMP as well for the memory, that's your extreme memory profile. All right, let's take a look at everything else that's in here. Just I'll just go through this quickly because I don't want the video to be too long. Got it turned on Windows 10, Windows 10 WHQL, there you go, for faster boot, fast boot. Ultra fast! I don't know, I'll leave it off for now because I'm doing overclocking, but but also there is a setting here for other OS, so if you're playing around with, you know, Linux or OS2 warp! Yeah, there you go. OS2 warp, everybody. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, peripherals. So we've got RAID, and uh, that'll work with even the uh, M.2 and the uh, U.2 and stuff like that. Is that a uh, computing? NVMe configuration right here. All right, network stack configuration. Chipset, turn off the internal graphics if you want to. RGB Fusion, what, what in the hell is this? <laughs> what in the UEFI? That is nice. Guys, thanks so much for that. Right, one, of, one of my favorite things about this board is the fact that they have so much going on in the UEFI, meaning you're not gonna have to install lots of software. It's removing a lot of the bloatware issue because people want their RGB but they don't want to mess with a you know bloated software or whatever. Some people don't, don't mind it. They want it in their you know they want it in their in Windows. But right here you have a wonderful little setup for your RGB. Check that action out. Do static. Uh, pretty much everything everything you need. So not only do you have that, but you also have this. We also have Smart Fan 5 built into the system. Now take a look at the screen here. Smart Fan 5 allows you to go and pick uh, which fan. And then you can set variables, being like, all right, this fan is going to be off if the you know the CPU temperature or the, the system temperature is lower than, you know, whatever. And then you can have it ramp up as the temperature goes up, and you can pretty much just click and drag and set this stuff, give me that, or not. So when you put it on manual, you can come in and click and drag these around and be like, okay, I want this one to go here. When it's uh, at 39C, I want it to be 49% or whatever. And then you also have just some preset modes like full speed, silent, or normal. I'm going to leave it on normal there and uh, see how it works out. But yeah, even a picture of your case you can arrange in there. Wow, this is almost as nice as the uh, programs you have right in Windows, right in your UEFI. As a quick sloppy tour of the UEFI, now we're going to reboot this thing and see if it works at 5 gigahertz just with the click of a button. If it does, I'll be, uh, be shocked. 
Well, it got into Windows. I'll play with the voltages and see what went wrong there, but yeah. Let's see if 4.8 works out of the box. Four point eight. This is just trying the right out of the box presets. Nobody move. Nobody move. Ow, my kneecaps. <laughs> so that was our sloppy tour of the uh, UEFI. Let's talk about the overclocking. Now, this motherboard did a really good job of just overclocking out of the box by clicking a couple buttons. The 7700K is a pretty easy to overclock part. I mean, it's already clocked at 4.2 out of the box, so hitting 5 uh, doesn't seem like that big of a deal. And there's already a preset for it in the box, but we blue screened a couple times with the preset that's in the box. So I had to go in and mess with the voltage a little bit, up a little bit. Had to get around 4.2, 4.3. Uh, before I started to see some stability at 5 gigahertz, and even then it was overheating a bit, so I might have to go in and mess with the load line calibration. But it looks like this motherboard is going to be able to overclock decently well out of the box. And the single core performance on that chip is around the 6800K, maybe a little bit better than that one. In fact, the Geekbench score that we got is almost comparable to the uh, 6850K, which is the X99 part, more expensive uh, platform, more expensive... Well, the chips may go up and down in price, but, you know, it's pretty interesting comparison. So let's talk about those benchmarks. We ran it through several different benchmarks. Uh, we ran it through TimeSpy, got a pretty good score on that one. Cinebench, we're putting all these on the screen. And also I'm gonna link all these on the website so you guys can just click on the link in the description, go over there and actually see the screenshots with the detailed results, more than we can cover in just the video. Uh, did a pretty good job in Firestrike, which is a lot of that's GPU bound, but you know, there's also a physics test in there. And then we also ran the little benchmark that comes with CPU-Z. So all that's in there. You gotta have good components like this good RAM. Decent graphics card helps as well. And we've got a hell of a little system here. Now you want to know if you should upgrade or not from your old stuff. If you're on Z170 and uh, you know, you've got a decent system going, but you want a little bit more speed or something, uh, if you're playing mostly games, you'll probably be better off sticking there and just getting a new graphics card. But if you want to take advantage of some of the bells and whistles, that's mainly the thing. It's like, you know, there's a lot of good bells and whistles on Z170. Here we just seem to have more, you know, there's more going on. Uh, the U.2, lots of M.2 on board. Uh, lots of stuff going on with, you know, just plugging the hard drives are plugging the SSDs straight into the bus and just getting by three Gen 4 extreme speeds, you know, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5 gigabytes on the read. Uh, if you're two or three generations back and you want a nice new system and, and you got the money to spare and you want to get it on day one when everyone's like freaking hyped and everything like that, sure, it's a, it's a nice it's a nice platform. Cabby Lake is very overclockable and uh, from our experience so far, it's been very stable. It doesn't get too hot. I think during the physics portion of the test, running at 4.8 gigahertz, which we did all the tests at, by the way, um, it did get up into the 80s, but that's still within operating spec. Um, I would like to see it a little bit lower, but uh, we may be able to mess around with that again, achieve better speed and performance with a little bit better cooling as well. So we didn't really tweak this, we just did it all quickly to see what we could do fast. Really like that you can access, you know, Fan Control 5 and also RGB Fusion right in the UEFI. That makes life easy and just allows you to have more control without having to mess with stuff, uh, you know, as far as software and Windows and all that stuff goes. You don't have to mess with any of that. And also if you're someone running uh, Linux, a lot of times you're just shafted. Shafted, is that the right word? Yeah, you're shafted, buddy. You don't get the software. You don't get to mess with your RGB and stuff like that. You, you just don't get it. So now you can just do it right in the UEFI and it can be agnostic of your operating system, which is just lovely. Other than that, it overclocks well. Uh, got a decent set of features. Audio is great on this. There's not a lot to complain about because this is sort of the, uh, you know, that's the Gaming 5. It's not the Gaming 7 or one of the more extreme motherboards, but it still does everything I want it to do. It's got plenty of options, 2 M.2, you know, and the U.2 and all that support. It's just a decent motherboard. It's interesting that, the, that they've changed the branding up to Auros, so you guys can let me know what you think of that. That's sort of one of the biggest news here when it comes to Gigabyte uh, and the Z270 stuff. The Auros name is now their branding for, uh, for gaming. Kind of aggressive, kind of interesting. Let us know what you guys think in the comments. And that's pretty much it for the video. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see the 7700K uh, versus like the, I don't know, the 6850 or something else. We have one of them here for a few days and we have to send it back to Intel and I can tell the guys to throw some benchmarks uh, together and then, uh, you know, show you the results. So since we have one, let me know what you guys would like to see and we will listen. All right, click on stuff over here. Go to the store. Get a t-shirt. Yes. That was my advertisement for the store. It was firm, I thought. I thought it was good. I'll go home and sleep well about that. All right, I'll see you guys in the comments or on Discord or on the website. See you. Uh, no one, what's this fucking gnat doing? He's got five flies.
Get out of here. You goddamn jackass. Oh, I killed it. He did not see that coming.